magic than physical. And they have the oracle too, uh, to keep them alive. So that might be pretty pretty nasty. We'll so, see how this goes. So a lot of sustain to work with. Let's uh, go quickly through it. Who's going to get the most amount of kills? I want to back the house guard team straight away. I'm on going one. with wings. You're going to go with wings? I'm wings gonna... have looked a lot stronger, and uh, I think they have prepared for the house guard. Number okay. of trees destroyed. It's a timber saw. <laughs> well, 301 plus easy then. <laughs> By 30 minutes? Okay, I'll, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm gonna go with 301 plus. Total number of deaths by 10 I minutes? I think it's gonna be a... Uh, it looks like a very, very passive. Hot. What? Are you kidding? Uh, God, they're, not gonna get into it. they're not gonna get into it, man. What? Okay, I'm going. I'm gonna go 16 plus. Do it. I'm gonna go 11 to 15. Okay. Barra strike already out. PPD. The arrow flies in, and welcome to first blood. PPD is already going to drop. Not even 42 seconds to the foghorn. Passive, Toby. <laughs> Hey, I'm happy when I'm wrong on that one. Team with the most runes picked up by the 10 minute mark. I'm going with. Mm, there's a wisp, though. Yeah, it's, it's how, how much uh, can wings really try and wing. contest it? Do they come down every single time and stop the IO? Yeah, I think they have the Sand King. The Sand King Marana threat is, all, is uh, I think, a lot to deal with this early uh, with like the very long cooldown grave. I'm going with wings. And they have first blood. They should secure themselves at minimum one run, actually. Okay, Sumail is actually on the Huskar, and the universe is on the Bat Rider. And okay. Bat Rider will be in the, the safe lane, begins. and Fear is on the Slaughter. So okay. So they they run the the mid. I'll take your. The mid Huskar mm -hmm. with the safe lane universe, and then the off lane Slaughter. They do have a lot of sustain. Like this dual lane between PPD as well as Fear is going to be really hard to kill. And is this Wings also changing their lanes up a bit? Ice Eyes is moving up north. Yep, Timber is just TP down to the bottom lane. So wings are, are already adjusting. They have the Observer Ward on the hillside, which lets them see PPD and Fear moving down here, and they've already adjusted. And in the middle lane, I think the two on two should favor Viper earlier. However, it's going to be hard for either of them with CS. Wisp, we already see start off with a TP scroll, just in case things get a little bit hairy in, in that lane or the other lanes. Uh, when when you've got Nio in this lane, like Samel should be able to go ham. Just needs a couple of levels. Somersault really needs level two before he can start doing stuff. He went for Whirling Death. He actually missed the Whirling Death for the first blood, um, but he is not going to have an easy time to start. It's a sad thing for Ice Ice when it comes to the lane, and like we've been seeing a lot of caustic finale builds arriving for an SK, but he needs the Barrier Strike so they can ensure the first blood. Yep. So he just has to wait out that lane before he can try and zone the bat. Universe can just do it tough for now. They need to prevent Wisp from getting the runes. It's one of the most important things to winning the Wisp plus one matchup in the mid. Or else, him just getting the bottle cards is, is very annoying, but him healing up the Huskar for 1.5x, that's like two and a half runes per rune. Oh, Samael, he's really, really low. Like, Zai is doing as much as he can. He's still got two bottle charges up his sleeve. And Samael still got the salve as well, but it is showing the fact that Shadow and Innocence are able to bully Samael out for now. Give him two levels, and that's not going to be the case anymore. But it's like the same with Fear. Like, Fear actually got really, like, up in the face of Faith, pushing him back underneath his own tier 1 tower, while Universe has a crack on top lane. Mirana, really, really low, leaving back behind the tower. Flame Break actually put him in a really bad position. He was forced to keep Napalm charges when Universe started that. And he Flame Breaked him into the Firefly. Level 1 Flame Break plus Snape Palm does a surprising amount of damage. It catches a lot of people by surprise. They're gonna go again on bottom lane. Quick little poison touch. There's no Timber Chain leveled up here for the Timber Saw, and Fears Crush well off the mark. And the Whirling Death. The Whirling Death is important because it reduces Slardar's damage by a decent amount. You actually wonder if, if like, killing oh, was even on them. For an arrow on a top lane, Universe gets nailed after the Furrow Strike, and that will be second blood. Wow, nicely done for Wings. Ice Ice actually prepped that one perfectly. He had a double damage rune and did the in initial chip damage onto Universe. Then Universe just thought he can come back in again. Pays and, the price with his life. And the Wisp TP top to try and prevent that death from happening. Which opens up Ice Ice to come into the mid. He doesn't actually, he's got stick charges, so he can Burrow Strike. 
if he comes into the mid lane. And with the orbs and sentry down, Wings can be feeling pretty confident that they've got the vision advantage here. Even though, like, during daytime, Smell has a good wide berth. If he goes, steps down those stairs, he is he's on her. Oh. Well, Smell won't do it, but on bottom lane, Faith initiated on. Fear, well, he keeps the charge going, but 10 reactive armor charges, that's a little bit too much. They're and Smell walked mid. down the stairs. They're coming back over, but Ice Ice, he's been chased down by a range creep, and Zai's already made his way back into the mid lane. Yeah, he only came to mid just because the... Only because the Wisp was on his way. Oracle and Io fighting for the bottom rune, and it looks like Oracle might be in a little bit of a pickle. Yeah, he's gonna get flanked. PPD comes in, blocks the stairwell. Innocence can't get up, and then they try and completely block him in with the illusions. But Fear will move yeah. over, gets the last hit. Just for him too, puts him over 1k gold, so that blink tag of timing may not be too late. They're looking pretty decent over here. Huskar does not have that much CS. Smell is only sitting at 9, and Viper is dominating with 22. You think this lane, like, they should be able to zone him out more once the other lanes become more perilous? Because then Innocence can't just sit in the mid, right? But then Edie has to, I think... or else Smell is going to kill him. Well, it's the top lane, I think that's uh, the bigger issue. They're going again on bottom lane. Crush him one second time. Hit Sim. Actually, use the Timber Chain, but Faith... So just a little bit too tanky, and they get the rotation in from the Sand King. Good TV responses by Wings in this early game. And these lanes, this just seems to be like a bit of range peppering, there's but there's still, there's still so much sustain. PPD and Fear trying to wrap around the mid lane and make it a four on two. They do have an observer ward on the south side, but I think this will catch them off guard. Oh, here they come. Fear running from behind. They're focusing over on Shadow. The male, how much damage have you really got with the burning spears and fear to help them out? They have enough. It's actually Zai who finds the kill, but there's a quick collateral. As Blink was able to arrive at just the right time, and PPD will go down. Play by Innocence there. He used Fate's Edict on the Huskar, so that kill was actually much more difficult than they had to commit much closer to the tower and made that uh, one for one. Not Terra great losing the Viper. He also did not spend his unreliable gold prior to dying over there. And looks like Zai will get a free bottle refill with PBD's TP in the middle lane, certainly helping out him and the Huskar. Oh, my visions are as fleeting as my feet. It's also another bit of a pain in the butt when uh, Samel, just before that fight started, he used Inner Vitality and Innocence uh, Fortunes ended it off. So Samel actually started that fight really, really low too. But no extra support. Universe wants to have another crack up on the top lane with the blink last two. Fears moves over. He's got the crush for the timing. Remember, they've still got leap available, but it will not happen in time. So Universe finds himself a kill. Quickly TPs himself down to bottom lane so they don't miss out on any of the experience. And this will allow now Fear to farm up on the top. Yeah, he's doing very well in terms of form. He, he was at like 23 CS just Radiant a few minutes ago, tower. but he's having to help out mid, having to help out bot, or top lane will slow down his blink tank unless he gets his tower on top, but it's still alive and healthy. Ice Ice trying to lay some deep observer wars, slow down the blink dagger timing. He will place it. I'm he pretty did. sure Zai did not see that. No, he didn't see it. I actually just checked the vision. Like, the, he didn't have any any side around the train line. But what they did see was the SK uh, TPing down, and they also saw the Oracle moving, thanks to the Dire Observer Wall that's on the, just to the west of the bot lane. So EG are aware of the rotation of wings. They just don't know where Ice Ice and Innocence have ended up. And that ward blocked the spawn too, not only scouting it out. And Huskar is still trying to work towards his armlet, will not be a very fast armlet. This is about the time you see a free farming Huskar get his armlet. Six, seven minutes. Smoke move from Ice Ice and Innocence. They'll head up to the top lane. And uh, Fear will have to be tested. They can't just Moonlight shout themselves in, however, mainly because the amplification being on Marana makes this a little bit less of a secret plan. And now, while well, Ice Ice gets revealed, so does Innocence, the smoke breaks, and Fear is back underneath the tier one tower in relative safety. That was the best. Best sense by Slardar over there. It was under nighttime too, so he had only a little bit of time to react. And that's a level three Sand King stun that has Tranquil and Windley, so. They really want to was... go for this. Yeah, I don't think they saw that PPD was there though. PPD popped that Observer War right down, and we'll see Ice Ice retreat back towards the safety of the secret shop. 
confidence from fear when he can just sprint himself forward. But he's got he had double amplification up. <laughs> All right, so things have remained fairly passive for the start of this game. Only six kills in eight minutes. Everyone must be waiting for their critical timings. And what are we looking for as far as timings? Huskar Armlet is the first one. Blink Dagger, uh, Blink Dagger on Bat Rider and or Slaughter is the second one. But it looks like Universe might be going for the drums build with the Windlace and the Bracer in his stash. That was a really heavy commitment from Wings. It looked like they believed they had Samel when Ice Ice TP'd in. Potentially could have Boris striked forward, but it's the top lane where now they're going to go with the amplification into the crush. Mirana PPD, the Shadow Wave Field Bomb. It goes on the Mirana, they're going to turn damage into PPD, find that kill. The Fear wants to go for more. The crush on the Ice Ice, he has to stay in place, but Zai will get another kill. Makes it three for the Iowa, the five that EG have taken. Got him with his leap down. Nice play from Fear, though. I think Fear's really keeping his team together in this early game. And making plays in all of the lanes. And slowing down the Marana, who was... Quite, she was number, number one network leader for quite some time. She was like 3,300 when everyone else was a little above 2,000. Now that's equalized quite a bit, and he's halfway to his Blink Dagger. I still hold CS wise. But you can see how Wings are holding control of the lanes, but... Overall, like it's still only maybe 700 gold going the way of Wings, net worth. The experience just slipping the way in favor of EG. And let's see, the Marana has not really had an opportunity to use Moonlight Shadow, as you mentioned, and they, they I mean EG has an observer ward in all three of the lanes, so they are actually kind of well prepared for that Batrider with an invisibility rune. Trying to look out for Shadow. PPD. Three a little bit of trouble. Fire strike through into the follow up My arrow. Shadow. Support's coming over from Universe, Lost. but it's way too late. Oh With the Invis rune, he doesn't know. He can't get any kind of follow up here. Mainly because he's just got no teammates next to him. Side doesn't have relocate yet, so they can't just drag in Samael. Samael still needs two pieces of his armlet. Only the Helm of Iron Wheel and the Gloves of Haste. Universe may be setting up for someone, but he needs someone else to come over. Slardar, no TP. Huskar not interested in leaving that mid lane, so it will just expire. I think Zai's realized, like, he's not even attempting to put the uh, the stack here. He's realized there's an observer ward. Up next to see he's got Universe. Okay, he's got last two. Wait to let him set up a little bit, and now there's your jump in with a relocate. Zai was able to have it. Nice tome used by Zai. I think he was just level 5 at that. Uh, he was. Yeah, and then he picked up the tome and then they relocated. That was very unexpected by Wings. You, whenever you're playing against a Wisp, you constantly pull down a score tab trying to see what level the Wisp is. And they did have eyes on him too, yeah. so they didn't even have to do that. But... He was standing on top of the Ops ward and showing the fact that he was level 5. Yeah, maybe and... he was trying to next level them. It's like, hey, I'm level 5, guys. I know you see me. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can give him the credit for it at least, even if he didn't intend it. Unintentional awesomeness. Alright, so EG now, just leading by one kill. But there's still no map control to be taken. This looks like a big brawler game between Wings and EG just brewing. I think e EG is about to explode though pretty soon. The blink on the Slardar and the Arblet on the Huskar, I think they could force a fight into the Roche pit, which they should be able to control very well because of the Batrider uh, inside the pit, as well as the threat of the split push and the relocate on the side lanes with the IO. So they can spread Wings up around the map and just take Roche at their leisure. Unless they have a move on the top lane, Fear. That's what they're looking for. PPD's in the neighborhood to leap forward into the arrow. Fear will go down. PPD could not get the Shallow Grave off in time, but Universe look for some revenge. He does not have Lasso. It's on cooldown for another three seconds. With the 10-1 charges, doesn't commit. Four heroes from Wings arriving on the top lane. What a time to kill Slardar. He was just a couple hundred gold away. Slow down that blink dagger. Yeah, they and set up wings the keep chasing. Too. Like Ice Ice is going in very deep on the dire jungle. Just, just want to make sure that they don't have any stacks. Just scouting it out, and now they see a two. Found one. Verona could potentially steal some of that too if he wants to with the arrow. They're but... looking for those juicy four five stacks, Toby. <laughs> I would give a lot of money. Always feels very weird when you when you see a Marana. Like, like almost every Marana we had yesterday was Narcane Boot Marana. Mm -hmm. He likes his face. And he also likes... I saw him get like level 2 leap at like level 4 or something. 
And no. He does strange things now and then. CPD in trouble. Gonna self grave very quickly. The relocate's coming in, however. This will bring Samael to the front lines. He still doesn't have that armor up just yet. But with the epicenter prepared by Eyesight, the fire strike in. Samael's in trouble. So I can't keep him alive. The relocate, it doesn't even have time to end in two seconds. But he gets sliced up by the Timbersaw. And Universe and PPD are stuck underneath their tier one towel with wings circling like sharks. And when they drag the creep wave down, this is now a license to dive. Universe does not have a TP scroll. And he's got another 11 seconds Dyer's till his Firefly comes back off attack. cooldown. And ISI is Radiant's gonna have a lock. Bottom tower is under attack. And this is one of the things about wings that I think makes them very strong, is that they overcommit to ganks. It's like, oh, I only Dyer's see two people going on our dazzle. We're gonna relocate three. And oh, wait, their whole entire team is here. And if Oracle weren't there, that would have just been EG getting two very very easy kills we're gonna see it again so samel arrives in faith very deep in but by tipping off to the side he drags eg into the unfavorable position but we come back live as they battle it up in the mid lane eg again fighting up the towers this time it's the radiant tower with a two for one trade off they bring down the viper but samel goes down again is under attack that was a blink dagger reveal up on fear, trying to look for a plus one as he circles around. However, they do not have an observer war plop down. They don't have good vision behind the tower. In well, a sense, not in a good spot here. Fear still doesn't see him though. The vision. Now he'll get a glimpse. Crush up, amplifying him, gets an extra bash just for good measure, and PPD will help him out. Innocence looking to deny himself up to the angels, but can't reach the golems in time. Maybe he thought he had a little bit more mana. I was surprised he didn't disarm the uh, Slardar. Arrow misses Slardar by a good margin. And Sumail finally has completed his armor. Took a while. Long time. And this is this is like a straight armor too. This is there's no strength throws behind it, there's no extra items coupling apart from the magic wand. Sumail still needs more time to get some strength behind this Husker. And not just rely on Zai, even though Zai, like, Zai has still got four kills and one death to his name. So he's walking around with Urn as well as our game boots. And the Dire team is circling around the bottom room here. Oh, is minutes. coming in. He fires strikes on the Zai of Fear right there. Blink Cross with the damage to his face. It's so big with the Timber Chain through, but it's the SK, the one to die. Zai had the one charges up his sleeve. So they regen up nice and quick. And they're circling. Universe, the flame break. They're trying to push it back in closer. Sentry Ward down by PPD will reveal a shadow with the rest of Wings. They are all here. It's five man style Dota, even though there's four of them alive. Samael, the life break is up. Does he want to jump? And who's he jumped towards? Faith is the one tibetaning away with fear. A great crush. They hold him there, but then the shark him. They turn and find Faith being on a lot more time thanks to the Oracle. He will probably still pop, though he won't. He actually regens up more than enough under the T1 tower. And now it's EG who are on the run. Samael is too low, one whirling death and one punch. The Timber finds another kill. They fire strikes to the west. They attack to the east. And EG, they are killed all the way across the Radiant Jungle. Universe will survive, but EG found themselves way too deep and way too outnumbered. Oracle is the new hot support. They, EG had coordinated so well to try and get killed before the false promise came out but he casts it like when they're at 10% normally when you're an oracle player you're like oh god I don't want to cast it before they die you don't want to cast too early or they won't win and you don't want to cast too late or that person is just in the grave same with the dazzle but the dazzle has less has much less of an impact I feel like with uh, than the oracle of this game yeah Mostly because the Huskar has been uh, very weak, but like the Huskar went in really deep, the Slardar went in very deep, and they just got destroyed by that damage from the Timbersaw. My goodness. Eiji's going for another hunt. So Fear's gonna have to blink crush this mid lane. They're looking to Shadow. This time around, there's no friends from Wings for me, but they're TPing over the T1 tower, and EG looks like they're trying to take a leaf out of Wings' book right now. Bring five players to every single team fight. Then you should be covered. Tower and if they secure this tower, Roshan will be opened up and maybe Sumail and get a foothold in this game. Yeah, I think that's how you, how you do respond. You're like, okay, well, you guys are going to send five Zai in a little bit of danger. Uh, the arrow's going to fly up. He'll avoid it. Moving over, so Zai's going to tether target. 
Timbersaw is very farmed though. He's he has 12 Dyer's bloodstone charges and Sunday six kills, and it's kind of the dream. Oh, they're coming to defend. Beatus uses Blink to get back defensively from PPD. But Wings has brought everybody apart from the Marana into that mid. Okay, they're not gonna. I thought for a moment they were gonna go because the TP timing. They didn't see the Wisp. I, th I think it's suicide to go on the Huskar when uh, you don't see one of the defensive heroes. They'll just heal him up, he'll be really low, and just output a ton of damage while armor toggling, and then get Graves if he's in severe danger. And now, Wings has an added toolkit to their arsenal. The Ag Scepter complete on the Marana, 19 minutes in. Pretty good timing. And they're instantly going to put it to work, the smoke maneuver from Wings. There's been a lot of missed spells. I've just seen Timber saw miss Dyer's maybe four plus whirling this. Mm -hmm. Missed the chain Dyer's right there. Not the biggest of the PPD. Out in no man's land. Ice Ice, point four, gets the stun, follow up arrow. Zai tried to tether in to save the Dazzle. Well, he was committing relocate with that one. It was more just a, a tether for heal. Wings are giving them no chance to do secure this roast. They, they like don't split up and farm when there's an okay Dyer's opportunity. Like sometimes you'll see teams like, oh, Allies. let's push towers. We're stronger than them five on five. But if you push a tower, you're you, like for top tower, for example, you're just going to be opening that up for them. And they are just trying to gain control of this top side of the map, dropping down deep observer wards. And they, as she was scouting out, Batrider farming. Ben, some may, uh, universe may have noticed that. Because he was Fire Flying up, and that's what revealed the SK when he threw down the ward. Because he came out of Moonlight Shadow. So the Viper is not perfect. This is 0 and 4. Trying to work on a Dragon Lance, but he's been the front of the a lot of the <laughs> ganks from EG. D didn't he do his job though, right? Like he was just meant yeah, to keep Samael down that in the time. early he stages. He definitely did that. Yeah, and with with the help of Oracle, like it worked perfectly. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. EG trying to get aggressive again. This time it's gonna be the mid lane. Faith, long timber chain back, form a place of his tier one tower. So that was no easy jump. And that's thanks to these two observer wards mid lane as well as inside the dire jungle. They just see every maneuver. To be very careful about where they farm out and where they have the reserve rewards. One hero can, any one hero can easily die to a blink, slard crush, and to a relocate. So, uh, or lasso plus relocate. So there are multiple threats coming out from EG, and wings have to stay a little bit safe. And EG constantly eyeing for opportunities in each of the three lanes. Well, that observer was able to see a little bit. At least get a glimpse of Ice Ice as well as Faith. My uh, fear is now blinking himself away from the mid. But EG are preparing themselves on top lane. Like, Universe can TP down the bottom lane if he really needs to. Uh, Universe also did go for that drum to Ether Lens, but he still needs to reach the Blink Dagger. The Oracle hasn't really been uh, waiting for the lasso, and this is generally how you'll see the Batriders play against a hard lasso counter, is just napalming, flame breaking, being super annoying, and just saving your lasso until the perfect moment, which is not at the start of the fight like you normally see Batriders. So I, I like this from Batrider, this is uh, a mark of a very experienced Batrider player. They still need a way to get rid of that Oracle early on. Like a good relocate position they, they could do that. Do. The innocence is always Radiance at the back line. You just can't get forward. And even if you think you do, like Ice Ice is always there with an epicenter lens, so you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. It's also the their tank playing very well. Like the, the Viper, as you mentioned, is doing his job. He's out in front. They have to get past him to get to the Oracle. And it's, it's they're never like playing super far back. And dying for that reason is pretty decent. So Wings don't fall for the trap of defending that tower on top of though. Oh, that they, chain. That chain forward. Samal's gonna make a run. We're gonna send to a war runner as well. Headed up north. It, they trade the bottom T2 for the top, which is like even if it were a T1 for a T1, it would still favor wings because of the Roshan control. And now they're slowly eliminating the control points that EG has around that. And I think like Husker not getting ages just means like his timer is just gonna expire much sooner. Huskar tends to fall off. I would say maybe 30, 35 plus once heroes start getting BKBs. Not that Wings have any good BKB carriers, but it's still around that time where his magic damage just isn't as strong as it used to be. And like once he dies a lot, and once he doesn't have a good early game, and then compound that with him not getting the Aegis, then the timer becomes 5, 10 minutes earlier than normal. 
at the time of which being flashed up there by Nox. The average game time, I think that's going to be a little bit extended through this series as both teams, they can still go hammer and tongs at each other, but no one's really looking to go high ground just yet. Right now, EG is just looking to go mid lane. The Observer was down, so they see Shadow. There's support nearby in the form of the Oracle, but Innocence is already backing up, looking like he's uh, preparing to do a, a small stack, potentially, or they do their own smoke. Yeah, four-man group up, they go for a smoke, top lane relocates on the way, they're looking for the Marauder, he's worth a lot of money, and PPD is the man to find the kill. But it's a full five-man group to ensure that. And they're smoking, they found the Wisp. And they re oh, 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 oh. I think they were expecting more than yeah. an IO to come back then. Oh, they're immediately starting on the Roach with a GD on the Viper. I don't know if EG has wind of this. And they likely don't expect them to do Roach without the Marana. The Marana being a much more important hero for Wings than the Wisp to EG. But the damage output from the Viper, it's going down slowly. They actually do not have vision around the pit, oh. but EG will start suspecting something very soon when another hero is I've shown. Uh, if, if maybe if there was like one Observer Ward from EG in the Radiant Jungle, this would be flagging a lot faster, but they put their Observer Ward in the mid lane as well as next to the Radiant Seeker shop, but they're coming in close now. BBD puts down the sentry. Roshan is pretty low, and EG, can they smell the blood in the water? And right now, they're actually going over towards Ancients, while Innocence and Shadow, they're still finishing the job inside the pit. Sentry wards are going down for PPD, but they still don't thing inside the pit now the obs ward has been placed they realize the obs ward is up but the sentry ward that may reveal enough faith moving forward underneath that sentry but rojan he's gonna go down viper is the aegis to the immortal and eg they were backing out maybe expected wings to be attacking in but either way wings just got away with rojan's murder they expected the Timber, like they were playing around the timber saw. The timber saw showed himself on the bottom lane. He was threatening the T3, and I think they were expecting like a gank wraparound to gank the party that was going to gank the timber saw. That's what they were positioned for, and they like that's just not something that you expect. This like viper line of doing a roach with their most farmed hero dead, and that that's just. Very Dyer's difficult to predict. Tower. It's yeah. EG's turn for the wraparound. Yeah. They've been prepped up a little bit. They had the Frost Ogre, so there's a little bit of extra cold armor. And everyone's uh, on the north side. Ooh, Fear's showing himself. This this is a little bit too much obvious bait. So the scouting arrow thrown into the tree lines. It will miss some mail. But look at Shadow. He's just like, okay, I'm just going to beat on your T2 with my Dyer's Dragon Lance. <laughs> Range is a beautiful thing. So it's backdoor regeneration, but he's uh, almost beating it. There's one melee creep, and they ping it out. He is their hero. Dyer's middle tower <laughs> is under attack. Dyer's middle Here two tower, tower belongs to Wings. That leaves only one remaining out of tower right now from EG, and that's up on top lane. By the looks of it, on any position to defend this. In fact, they're already moving down to bottom lane, and Wings. You gotta say, like, they always seem attack. to be in the right place at the right time. Always preparing beforehand, making EG look left when they go right. They don't have a TP on the Murana, though, so it might not be a large scale engagement. Maybe looking to just stop TPs as they try and defend wings. Likely Maybe. looking to glyph the last second, but it's a relocate they have to stop. That's to be the main thing that's gonna bring fear back. Now they are arriving in the base, so Shadow starts attacking into the tier 3 tower. Epicenter preparing on bottom. The Burrows to get Fear into the mount. Tether forward from Zion, not to relocate. Triggers the mech, but already they've lost the slaughter. Samael has to try and stay in its ground. He can't attack for the moment. Innocence has held him at bay in the moonlight. Shadow, they're playing the invis game, looking for Zion the Wisp. Iron Spirit able to slap down the SK, but the damage is just so big from Wings. They bring down all three on the bottom. For the trade-off of the SK in the Tier 1 tower. Oh, well, it was a pretty good play by Wings right there. They had set up... Notice the TPs on the south side, too. They didn't see the, the TP until the BOT was already coming out. And they just thought it was a solo TP. The epicenter comes out on two. Some misspells here and there. Bro Strike uh, narrowly misses Sumail right here. And he actually ends up paying for it by dying to the Wispels. But still, they do get two prized heroes, and only at the cost of a T1 and a Sand King. Actually, three heroes. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't really call Wisp prized. Well, considering how many kills I managed to get during yeah, this maybe, game, maybe, maybe, he, maybe is. he is. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's seven kills and four deaths now on the IR. They got two kills and one support. Sumail being the support. Yeah. That's actually really crazy when you think about it. Like, but 
between PPD as well as Zai. Yeah, that's that's not a good stat when you when you have five kills on cores. Okay, I want this game to go 20 minutes longer so I can see the Oracle eggs. <laughs> I have never seen it in a competitive game yet. I don't think it has to go 20 minutes, man. Like, he's only 1k away. <laughs> With the fall of the mid right. he's probably going to have enough money for it. Do you know what the axe does? I wouldn't even blame you, because... Oh, no. Educate. Purifying flames cooldown reduced, I believe, to one second. Yeah, one second cooldown. <laughs> okay, it's already pretty low. Here's me narrowed up. Now, in comes your epicenter from my side. Zai got a lot of good regen. Actually, gets a relocate back onto the deep four towers. Allows the mouse to beat down Innocence. So that brought down the Oracle. Is this what EG needs to defend? Then again, have they got enough stain for it? There's the kill. The Haskar brings down the SK. And thanks to the burning spears finishing the job. Shadow doesn't really have a lot of mana to work with. He has, however, the Aegis Immortal of Fear. Blink crush with the extra bash. They burn through the Aegis to Mel. Caught the front lines a little bit too far out, but now they can move them towards Shadow. The life break forward, looking for the mine, but with the crush, actually catching Mirana as well. Mirana dropping low, they get through Shadow to Mel. The Shallow Grave lets him fight, lets him toggle, and looking for even more kills. Gotta be wary of that Chakram, not to mention the Invis battle through the amplification over on the Mirana. They know exactly where to go. Blink forward. Forward with a chain fate he's in the middle of EG universe perfectly spacing himself so that you are impossible to get faith get the damage on him to find the kill the middle of suicide I mean EG don't get to take the full glory but they defend they push wings out they lose their tier 3 tower they hold on to their racks and that's the TI5 EG right there that amount of teamwork Coming out, Zai with a very clutch relocate, saving fear from the grips of death. That was such last minute as well. And very nice Manta dodge right there too. Dodging the life break and they were so close to killing so many people. A PVD with the grave, the armor toggling the inner vit, and, and with the amp to chase. Very tough tail for wings as they try and make their high ground briefs. They do end up getting half damage on the Rex and the T3 down, but Certainly not worth it, and the hero that bought back was a Huskar, who was already pretty poor to begin with. I'm pretty sure he gained gold out of that buyback, which is actually a pretty rare scenario nowadays with that huge debuff post-buyback. It's also not great when your half damage was on the melee racks. That thing's regenerating up quickly, and by the time Wings is ready to come back in, it may even be full again. I don't know if Viper's the best Aegis carrier. He, he dies the most, but... He doesn't seem that useful if he dies twice because he can't get back in position. Like he just gets swarmed by the slaughter and the huskar. I think the well, the Marana yeah. might actually be because she does a lot of sustain damage. Piper's like uh, I don't know. He just seems underwhelming. She does put herself in a lot more peril with that Aghanims too. Always jumping in, but at the same time, like like her last jump in. Like, was met by the crush of fear. Fear's positioning during these fights has also been amazing. It's gonna get even easier now. It's completed up that BKB. So, controlling up fear is pretty much in the hands of the Viper at the moment. So you got Blink, Force, Gem, Lens, for on Universe. They'll see a lot of this coming. Zai's walking around with full Greaves on his IO. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of money on the IO. A lot of times you don't even see Whisk skip boots. <laughs> Little <laughs> and he's finished the whole thing. And Wings is pushing in through the top lane. They don't Link. have everything with them just yet. Uh, the they're actually bringing, they're down bringing down. a smoke over. They're going to smoke directly into EG. EG are moving up to get the Blink Rush over on base. The fire is right! It hits on three! Universe is going to be called out! With a follow-up in there! Epicenter! The battle of the fight thanks to the, with the Shallow Grave! But will it be enough? Zyg was sent to a different target. It's Mel and just have to totally his way through this. Impossible when you get fire struck up by Eyesight. Three euros lost from EG. Zyg will TP out, but unsuccessfully. Four down for the count. They brought down the Viper. EG thought they were going to be the aggressors. But once again, Wings they bring every point to gate crash the EG party. Wow, ice eyes with that stun. So Slordar had already went on to the Timber Saw, and then right as it happened, he blinks and catches out all the follow-up on top of their main stun not being able to stop the center. So you use the, the Bat Rider way too far away to Flame Break or Lasso him, and then everyone else is like, I can't stop this Epicenter. That was... That, that, that's, that's the Abort command. Release it there. EG, get the hell out. There's your Aghanim Scepter. It's over on Innocence now. 
ever seen it before. Uh, most uh, Oracle will just go for Aether Lens because it's, it's a lot safer and you can get range so you don't get uh, lassoed by the Batrider. But this is, this is a nice twist. Let's see how effective it is. It's, it's the confidence with the capital wings. Confidence would be getting a Kunkka, Kunkka egg. That would be confidence. <laughs> just bird it after bird it, and this is it again. A perfect forest strike into the epicenter. You're looking at Zion PP, he's like, what do we do? We'll tether and hold each other, but no one holding surveil through this. Yeah, they tried to grave him, but the damage had already been done. Universe, uh, they're, I, I guess, maybe second to their damage dealer. Third. Yeah, third. But this was the weakness you're talking about during the drafting phase. It's like, like, who else is really your damage dealer? You, you want to put fear on the front lines with the BKB, he's able to do that, but... Not in those scenarios, not when you get Forest Strike initiate. So EG want to be the aggressive Blink Crush. It does catch Piranha, but relocating in the BKB. Soaks up the arrow. They're looking for the kill over on Shadowman. In comes Eyesight again. A great epicenter. Getting all of EG. Universal Pump. Innocence is all over it. Just purify everybody right now. Eyesight maybe going to be protected. Don't be it. Back up with the Blink Crush. He needs to do some work. But right now it's one on three. Innocence is the one he'd like to have. But he just gets shredded apart. The double Chakrams and GG well played. EG will call it at the 35 minute mark. Wow. Wings have just won Maybe. game number one of the two game series to kick off their international run. That was pretty convincing. I think coming out from Wings, and I would also say pretty convincing coming out from EG too. I don't think that Huskar is in their normal repertoire of heroes, and Sumail, that's not really the type of hero that we think of when we think of Sumail. We think of more of the playmakers, not, not the uh, Superman type hero that we see. Uh, but